Epic Seven is a free-to-play 2D anime RPG available on both Android and iOS devices. Players take control of a super generic protagonist, don't hate me, recruit a harem of husbandos or waifus, and move horizontally across a large world filled with enemies to massacre as you, you try and save it? I've honestly had a lot of fun in the time that I've spent within this game, and admittedly, it is definitely one of the higher quality gacha games of its kind, which is probably why it has retained a degree of popularity ever since it released. But how popular is the game exactly? Has the game been growing, or is the game in a perpetual state of decline since its release? That's what we're here today to take a look at to see how Epic Seven is currently doing in 2023 as part of my new Gotcha in 2023 video series, utilizing a graph that I created that you can actually see in the background that we will be including for every episode in this series. You can find other episodes in this series either at the end of the video or by clicking that link in the description or the pinned comment below. That way, you can find out how your favorite games are holding up. Before we take a look at Epic Seven though, I want to thank every one of our patrons over on Patreon. You guys allow me to keep pushing out video after video and I deeply appreciate all of your guys' support. Also, if you have a moment, consider following me over on Twitch. I stream there every weekend. Epic Seven is a 2D anime RPG with absolutely stunning waifu models, fully animated anime cutscenes, and is one of the more gorgeous worlds presented to players to explore. And by explore, granted you are very limited in what you can do and where you can go, but it beats having absolutely no control over absolutely anything other than where you can deploy your units to. Epic Seven released in Korea on August 30th, 2018, and then globally on November 8th, 2018, and has gone on to captivate audiences ever since. But let's go ahead here and talk direct numbers, which will consist of worldwide earnings and total downloads. Unfortunately, finding earnings for each month of 2022 has, uh, well, been very, very difficult, which is why we're going to be tackling this video a little bit differently to normal. Back in 2020, Epic Seven was averaging roughly two to four million US dollars every single month with roughly 100,000 new downloads. In 2022, two years later, Epic Seven was averaging three million to four million US dollars every single month with roughly 80,000 new downloads per month. There were small spikes and subsequently dips, but no noticeable changes in terms of monthly averages. Beginning in October 2022, Epic Seven saw several banners and events. On the 6th, we saw the side story from Pride to Hubris, including Lua and Lilibet's banners. On the 15th, saw the Guild War Triumph season, along with Zahak and Elena banners. On the 20th, saw the side story Blood and Roses, including Melissa and Celine's banners. On the 27th, saw Haste, Rihanna, and Luciella's banners, followed by Cecilia's banner. During October, there were a grand total of 80,000 new players and $5 million in total revenue. Good numbers for a game that's roughly over five years old and not during any major holiday. November 2022 had several banners and events. On the 3rd, saw the side story A Fable of the Demons of Natalon, including the Aranka and Huayang banners, and I know someone is going to go down in the comments section and start complaining about my pronunciation or some of the names, but let's be real here, a couple of the names in this game are just really difficult, no, act impossible to say out loud. The tent then saw Peira and Cho's banner, along with week two of A Fable of the Demons of Natalon. The 17th saw week three of the same event, including Eula and Vassar's banners. The 24th saw the Epic 7X Aespa collab that would go on to take place over a six week period, including the side story A Step Towards Kwangya Chapter 1, along with Winter's banner and Kral's banner. During November, there were a grand total of 80,000 new players and $5 million in total revenue. These numbers hadn't changed from October, which is a very good sign. December 2022 had several banners and events. On the 1st, we saw the special side story a step towards Kwang in Chapter 2, along with the new 5-star hero Ning Ning. On the 8th, we saw the side story Fabulous Festival of Friendship with Flan's banner. On the 15th, we saw Giselle's banner. On the 22nd, we saw Karina's banner. And then on the 28th, we saw the side story fairy tale for a snowy day, along with Alencia's banner. During December, there were a grand total of 70,000 new players and $4 million in total revenue. This is not a large decrease by any stretch of the imagination, a single million dollars and 10,000 total players. 
Yet that single million was also 20% of its total, which was no doubt of a slight concern, especially given this was Christmas month and many people are no doubt spending more than usual. January 2023 had several banners and events. On the 8th saw the Indomitable Arena season, chapter 2 of the side story Fairy Tale for a Snowy Day, along with Alien Nav and Elena's banners. On the 12th we saw chapter 3 of the same side story along with Laika and Senya's banners. We also saw some episode revamps in the next week, followed by on the 19th the Advent side story Enraged Blazing Emissary, along with Ada and Ken's banners. On the 26th, we saw the side story The Weight of Freedom and Responsibility, along with Bihu and Arya's banners. Arya, of course, who was the subject of much attention due to her censorship. After revealing her outfit, I, I, I'm i going to be honest with you guys here, I saw her outfit literally the day it was announced. I saw all of the controversy that was going on, and I don't think it needed to be censored. I liked it, but I mean, you know, <laughs> that's just me. During January, there were a grand total of 100,000 new players and $3 million in total revenue. This is even lower than December's earnings and admittedly one of the lowest points in terms of revenue for the last year. But it did see an increase in total new players. February 2023 had several banners and events. The fifth saw the introduction of Moonlight Theater, the first step, followed by Ancient Inheritance Season 5, including Euphanase Banner. The ninth saw the special side story Game of Princes Week 1, followed by Tywin and Irvalin's banners. The 16th saw the special side story Romantic Getaway Week 1, along with Week 2, the Romantic Vacation Season Epic Pass, and Ran and Kawarix banners. The 23rd saw the special side story Romantic Getaway Week 2, and the limited summon Amid, who is gorgeous, just a small FYI. During January, there were a grand total of 110,000 new players and $4 million in total revenue. This was a slight increase over January, but as the last three years have proven, Epic 7 continues to average roughly 80 to 100,000 new players every month and 2 to 4 million dollars in monthly revenue. By those statistics, we can safely conclude that Epic 7 hasn't really grown in any capacity over the course of the last several years. Rather, it has managed to maintain a regular stream of new players and revenue, which really isn't anything to mock or put down. Rather, those statistics have placed Epic 7 in the top 20 most popular gacha games worldwide literally every single month. Sure, it might not see numbers like Genshin or more recently Nikkei and Blue Archive, but there are plenty of players that continue to play this game and spend money on it. But if Epic 7 isn't your thing, don't worry, I got you covered with two videos on screen right now. One featuring a list of every confirmed gacha releasing this month, and the other featuring a list of other gacha games that I have covered in my gacha in 2023 series.